Ten years ago, at the International Conference on Population and Development in Cairo, 179 leaders signed a groundbreaking agreement linking the fight against poverty to women's rights and universal access to reproductive health care. Ten years on, there's been some progress. 6% more couples use modern contraception. There's an increase in attended births and emergency obstetric care, and fewer maternal deaths. Adolescent reproductive health is now a worldwide concern, and campaigns counteracting violence against women are increasing. But there's a long way to go. More than 350 million couples still don't have access to family planning services. Complications in pregnancy and childbirth mean 529,000 women still die every year. And in many countries, reproductive health and rights remain the focus of fierce arguments. LIFE visits the Philippines, Latvia, Japan and India to report on some of the achievements as well as the setbacks since Cairo. There is quite a bit of, of opposition, if you want to say, regarding the issue of reproductive uh, health and rights, because it's an issue that is taking the private into the public. It's opening the doors of, of homes and having people from the outside look inside. It is about taboos. You're talking about sexuality. You're talking about the rights of women to say no to coercion, sexual coercion. And that is a very private and taboo issue, not in all cultures of the world. And here you're putting it as a debate, a public debate. And therefore, it, it brings about social change. It, it brings about policy change. And there are always groups in every society that such a change uh, is not acceptable or they cannot handle it. In the Philippines, there are almost 85 million people, a figure set to rise to over 100 million by 2015. Here, the average Filipino family has three or four children, but the poorest fifth of the population have between nine and 12. Only a third of married women use contraception but all too often, they don't even have adequate information to use it effectively. I have eight boys and three girls, but I'm still taking the pill. Then I unexpectedly had a grandson because my daughter got married and had a child. The Filipino government signed up to the Cairo Agreement to ensure women had the critical information and services they need to be able to control their own fertility. But health organizations like Lekan, working in poor communities, say the implementation hasn't happened. For the first time in the history of these uh, conferences, we had a document that asserted women's rights. We have the language now sometimes to fight and to ask for these policies, but are we better off? I think we're far worse because government will not follow the ICPD, to which it is a signatory. Ten years on from Cairo, Filipinos still don't have legislation to provide better antenatal and obstetric services for women. 17 out of every 100 women die in childbirth. And there are still only enough trained health workers to attend one out of every five births. To deal with this crisis and the problems of soaring population growth, the government tabled two important bills in 2001, one on population and development, the other on reproductive health. But the Catholic Church exercises a pervasive influence on Filipino society. For three years, opposition from the Catholic Church and conservative lobby groups has held up the passage of the Reproductive Health Bill through Parliament, arguing the proposed legislation is anti-life. The Church's view on the issue of population and development has been always of a conservative one. With regards to population control, we have what we call the pro-life controls. If the government pursues what we call anti-life means, like abortion, anti-life 
uh, means of you know, of uh, population control, then they will never meet um, because the church's stand is always pro-life.